Hello, everybody. Dan Tomaszewski here with Everything MSP. Hope you're all doing well. I'm uh, here today with Justin Ryle, who is the head of alliances with Perimeter 81. How are you doing today, Justin? I'm doing great, Dan. How are you? Doing good. Living the dream. Another day in cybersecurity, right? That's that's right. It's always an adventure. Absolutely. And it's, it's never a... Uh, Never a dull day, unfortunately, but uh, uh, that's what we're here for. That's what our passion is. So that's all a great thing. You can't complain. Yeah. Between cybersecurity and, and two young kids at home, the, the mantra of the days are long and the, the years yeah. are short is is much, much true for me these days. So yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, as we get started, I, one of the things I like to do is, uh, you know, get a refresher for our audience. Um you know, many out there are very familiar with Perimeter, Perimeter 81. However, you know, for those that may not be familiar with you guys, uh, can you give just a, a overview of you guys? Yeah, sure, Dan. So Perimeter 81 was founded in 2018, uh, primarily as a zero trust network access uh, use case. So that was a kind of a pure VPN replacement with zero trust policies for users. Um, the company has since evolved. We've we've built a lot of great IP in the solution over the last uh, five years since the company was founded. And our, our core focus is delivering secure networking, but as a service. So when you think about traditional networking and a lot of hardware uh, that's involved, we take that back and we really focus on the edge. Um, and the reason is because, you know, we all know the paradigm of work has shifted, you know, and that trajectory was moving before COVID, but, uh, you know, into COVID and then post COVID that has obviously moved at, at rocket speed. So the solution, as we call it, we're moving from a site centric network security, right? Protecting users in an office to user centric security. So now we're protecting, you know, MSPs are protecting their customers regardless of if they're working from home, you know, on the road, or even if they are in the network, uh, we can address that as well uh, in an office. So uh, that's the focus of what we do. And that really spans everything again, from the networking firewall in the cloud, those zero trust network type policies, a web gateway. And, you know, we've, we've set ourselves aside in the sense that there's, you know, quite a few solutions in the market that have come up and offered a similar type SASE slash SSE, if folks are familiar with those, those Gartner terms, right? Secure Service Edge or Secure Access Service Edge. Uh, but we have focused really on MSPs and delivering this as a service that's very easy to consume. Networking can be complex, uh, but we want it to be simple, quick, easy to deploy. And, and that's where we focused and we think we've excelled and, and the market's given us great feedback. That's great. I mean, a lot has changed in the last uh, four years. Uh, you know, clearly the pandemic has had a major impact on how organizations uh, operate. And, uh, you know, you clearly have, you know, uh, taken the lead in filling that void. And uh, that's awesome. Now, uh, I do want to cover some some pretty exciting news that uh, is out there. You guys were acquired not too long ago by Checkpoint. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. So as I mentioned, the company was founded in 2018. Uh, we we grew really well. We had our headquarters in Tel Aviv, and we had an office here in New York as well as in LA. Um, our founders are are from Israel, and uh, you know, as the company grew, uh, we were looking towards an exit, and we were very attractive to to Checkpoint, right? So Checkpoint, I think everybody is on your, in your audience is likely aware, but a 30 plus year old cybersecurity organization, and they've done extremely well. Um, great technology, but as they look towards the future of networking, right? And what, as we kind of talked about at the beginning, right? How do we now protect users in this new paradigm of remote work better, um, right? We have firewalls, we have all the different technologies that have been delivered uh, by MSPs, but what's sort of that, that next edge-based solution. Uh, they saw value in Primary One and decided to make that acquisition. So the deal was closed in September of last year and we're you know, going through the motions now of, of integrating, which is a fun effort, uh, but there's a lot of good opportunity ahead, right? So given the fact that 
Checkpoint has been in the market for 30 plus years. They've got a lot of events, right? Billions of events that they see. Uh, so being able to consume their threat intelligence or into our platform, bring in additional R&D resources that they have to enhance the already great platform that we have for our, our managed service providers, a lot of great opportunity for us and, and the market as a whole uh, through this acquisition. So we're super excited about it. That's pretty cool. Um, definitely being able to uh, attached to, to checkpoint, uh, sounds like, you know, there's just, uh, you know, unlimited amount of benefits to that. And, uh, that's pretty cool. Congratulations. That's, uh, great to be part of, I'm sure. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And and they've been focused on some great technologies as of recent. So they also closed the deal with Atmos Act a few, few, uh, months ago. And then folks in your audience are probably familiar with Avanon, the, uh, email security solution, right? So that deal was done over a year ago. So they're, they're really focusing on solid technology that's, that's cloud and SaaS delivered um, going forward. That's great. So um, I want to jump back to, you know, really one of the key areas of what you guys focus on is just the whole work from anywhere. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, we, we hear that some very large organizations have, uh, maybe shifted back a little bit to working in the office, but I think for you know SMB market, um, you know work from anywhere is here to stay, and there are clearly a lot of benefits to that. Um, but what are you what are you seeing as far as the overall trend of work from anywhere? Yeah, we're we're seeing the the trend remain the same in terms of the SMB market, the mid market, and below. I just define that uh, as as you know the majority has some sort of remote work component. It may not be full-time, but but absolutely the majority is hybrid. You know, we've been involved very much in uh, the Evolve peer groups over the last year plus, engaging with MSPs. And when we talk to the community and understand, you know, where their customers are at and how they're working, uh, you know, the resounding feedback is the majority are are remote. So then that that next question leads into, Right? How are how are those individuals consuming cybersecurity? Are they, you know, potentially backhauling traffic into an office that nobody is in anymore? Um, are there solutions that are uh, focused on maybe one point of that remote work? Maybe we're offering a single VPN with limited policies, but then there's a you know a DNS filtering solution from another vendor. So what does that landscape look like in terms of how they're building their service to address? Uh, those users and where they're at. And um, yeah, that's where we've really excelled in uh, delivering that very consumable, uh, having robust policies for those users and uh, delivering it as a cloud service. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think there's going to be much change in, in the near future with this. Um, you know, what are, what are some areas that you guys are, you know, going to focus on and continue to focus on that relates to, you know, um, MSPs clients that are really working from anywhere, any place. Yeah. So we've done a lot, even over the last year, as we look towards what we've delivered and that what we will continue to deliver. So just maybe a quick highlight of, of what we've done is, is look at third-party integrations, right. As well as API structures. So how do MSPs consume our service and make it deliverable you know, maybe outside of, of the web UI, right? How do they leverage our API endpoints to deliver it in a more automated fashion? Um, we also came to market with uh, some integration with ConnectWise last year around some billing automation. So looking at the broader ecosystem that MSPs operate in, right? How do we, how do we address their needs and meet them where they're at and, and build these connections to make our platform even better leveraging the tools that they have in place today? So you know, in my role from an alliances perspective, that's that's very much what I'm focused on. Uh, but additionally, we're continuing continuing to add different technology to the the platform itself uh, for these users. So I'd mentioned those zero trust network access policies, right? Making sure the backbone of the network that the users are on is highly available and redundant, so they're they're never experiencing downtime if for some reason there is an issue with with the cloud edge. So all these things to make the service very usable, but also user friendly, because we all know that with cybersecurity, right? There's there's a lot of nice shiny new objects, but 
What right. does that mean for the user? What kind of pain does that put on them? And that's yeah. something when we think through our product management and our planning processes of how do we bring additional technology? How do we introduce, as I had mentioned, the, 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 the threat cloud and the solutions from Checkpoint into Primary One, but not have any sort of a negative impact on our, our customer base? So those are the things, you know, not just technology, but the consumability of the, the product is really where, where we're focused in this year as we continue to integrate further with, uh, with Checkpoint. So overall, when you take a look at uh, your MSP partner base, um, having the finger on the pulse of, you know, those partners is so critical. You know, what are some of the things that uh, you guys at Perimeter 81 do uh, to stay in tune with those MSP partners? And, you know, and what are some of the things that, uh, you know, you're either implementing or plan to implement um, based on that feedback? Yeah, for sure. So as I was on the road last year, as our um, account managers were traveling, you know, one one theme we were hearing was just what I had mentioned before. There, there's a lot of solutions in the market. There's a lot of noise, a lot of great solutions, right? But how, as an MSP, do I decide what's best for my customer base and where do I align my services based on maybe a larger mapping? That's not just me listening to vendors in the market. So you know, we heard the CIS controls come up quite often. Uh, we had launched a partnership uh, mid last year with Pax8 and they're leveraging CIS controls pretty heavily with their partner community. Um, I'd mentioned the evolved peer groups or ConnectWise, you know, being heavily involved there, quite, quite a few of those individual peer groups were leveraging CIS controls. And what, what they were doing was looking at the framework, what their existing uh, solutions, how those aligned, where the gaps were, and then leveraging that as a decision-making process to look at new tools or say, hey, my stack's great as it is today, continuing offer this to my customer base with, with no change. Um, and we didn't align to an existing framework. Certainly we had great technology, but when we were in those conversations, it was um, you know sort of manually showing where we map, but there was no formal uh, mapping. So we, we took that effort really towards the end of last year and looked at the CIS controls as a whole and mapped the primary one solution to all um, the controls on that, that matrix. So we've done a great job. And actually, we just released that a few days ago through our, our, our product marketing team. So as we engage further with the MSP community this year, we look forward to showing them how the solution engages with CIS, learning more about other frameworks that they're leveraging, and just continuing to listen to our customers and and helping them make the decision process much easier. All right, that's that's a great uh, great update for me. I appreciate that. And uh, we are um, uh, we are out of time. You know, it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, when when we're passionate about what we do, how uh, how quickly time uh, rolls through. So, um, so I, I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. And for all of our members out in the audience. Um, please uh, take a look at Perimeter 81. Uh, lastly, Justin, if somebody wants to learn more about you, where can they get additional information? Yeah, they can go to Perimeter81.com. Uh, they can email sales at Perimeter81.com. There's, there's plenty of resources on the web. Um, and we're pretty, pretty broadly distributed out there, so you can find us quite easily. I appreciate it, Dan. It was great awesome. to spend some time with you. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.